Catching big red snapper in recent years has become a little easier just because I think the average size fish in the Gulf of Mexico for red snapper has, has gotten bigger uh, over the years. When I first started fishing for them 15 years ago, they seemed to start to show up. The average fish you know, wasn't that big. You might get some 15, 20 pounders. Um, but now you can almost have a good day where you average that size. And a lot of that we do by fishing for the bigger fish up in the water column. This is a, a look at a spot in about 170 feet. And if you're out that deep, the show you kind of want to look for on your depth finder is something like this. It almost looks like a Christmas tree. When you get some of those more solid returns, those are bigger fish. When you get some of the scattered stuff that looks um, just small, you know, a lot of that will be bait. And I'm going to give a couple of examples of both here. So this, uh, like I said, 170 feet. It's a, a little ledge, ledgy bottom. There's some hard bottom. And so sending the camera down, you can kind of see the red snapper coming up in the water column. So this is when it's about halfway down after we had been fishing for a bit and the fish really got fired up. And it's pretty crazy when you get on some of these spots and, and the fish, the red snapper, will come in from all around the area. And they seem to enjoy the, the activity that feeding will bring in. So on a day like this, it, it, it's almost too easy. If you're firing down heavy lead, you might get past them and then you end up fighting a fish off the bottom. So I like to fish lighter tackle and get the ones up in the water calm. Getting fish up in the water calm, you're not going to have too much of an issue of getting broken off um, because they have a very long way to go to get down. And so as camera's going down, you see lots and lots of red snapper up. It gets a little closer to the bottom. You can start to see some of the, the coloration here. And obviously we didn't quite get on the, the main piece of bottom here, but camera hits near some rocks and you can see the amount of fish come in. There's a nice grouper in the back. Um, there's, you know, average eight to 10 pound red snapper. There's big mangrove snapper. Pretty much everything from the area comes in to look at the camera. And red snapper, you can see they kind of like to hang up in the water column versus the grouper that are back here. There's even a little goliath. So they'll be the ones more willing to come up versus, you know, the grouper sitting right on the bottom. There's some red grouper, some gag grouper back there as well. So this spot's got a little bit of everything. One of the problems when you're trying to catch grouper, uh, it's hard to get past this amount of red snapper. It takes a, a pretty large bait. You need some giant, you know, blue runners or some mackerel, something large to get down. Now, here's another spot fairly close that I was running between spots, and I marked this. And so you're going to see a little bit of difference. So this right here is what I'm looking for when I want to catch bigger red snapper up in the water column. I could tell this was a school of bait just by how you know dense the, the red show is, but then when it thins out, you see more of the, the scattered. But then the stuff up on top of it, that's what I end up wanting to target. Those are the, the bigger red snapper. And when you can get that kind of show out in 170 feet, showing fish up above bait, it's typically going to be very large, large red snapper. So camera going down on that show now. And I kind of expected to see bait, and there's all the bait. And then, boom, there's the red snapper. So that show, with the one red snapper up above the bait, you can kind of see what it looks like underwater now. So that, there's your red snapper, there's your bait. translates to that exact thing underwater. So big red snapper up above the bait, bait all around, and it's, it's kind of wild how much there was. And this was something I found going from spot to spot. And if I see that much bait, typically it's going to be holding over hard bottom. So there's a mangrove snapper underneath the bait. And it looks like a lot of cigar minnows, Spanish sardines, that type of stuff that people will use dead. But if you, can, if you want to drop down a sabiki and get some of these live, fantastic live bait as well. So the spot itself is, it's kind of rocky, uh, not real big. There's a little kind of crack as the camera, you know, bounces around that you'll see. That I think there's one big gag grouper that was sitting underneath this bait as well. And so that's kind of the uh, the show. So there's the the little crack with some snapper sitting up above it. Nothing too crazy, uh, but that little thing right there, if, if there's bait around it, 
you know, with new technology, with, you know, Rodan's, Minko to making GPS trolling motors, I'll stop and I'll fish something like that, just trying to pick off a couple of real big fish. Because they, the big fish love those little, little pieces of bottom like that. And then here is another show, same area. Uh, I, as I go around, I mark all these different spots. And this one I could tell wasn't as red snappery, but I typically get big red snapper. It doesn't have quite the big red returns that the red snapper will give. And so I was still curious. So I'm like, all right, let's send down the camera. We got a couple real big fish, but then we started getting kind of just, you know, chewed off. Our, our baits would fall off the hooks with just little little bites. And I was like, I think I'm pretty sure I know, I know what that means. And so that show turns into vermilion snapper. There's a hooked red snapper, though. You can see it's going up cut off the bottom and so these vermilions were coming up in the water calm kind of making some of that light tackle fishing a little bit more difficult but if you drop bigger baits you know big red snapper will will find it and this this is actually one of my favorite spots it's something i found about 10 years ago the very first time we found it we caught a couple 20 pound red snapper on it it's like all right we're on to something here so camera going down and so it hits bottom and it's it's a very small ledge. Let me see if I can get it paused right on it. So it's a very small ledge. We've caught some big gags on it. But these big red snapper, when they're feeding, they get out and around it, and you're able to to get them on the, the heavy tackle. And usually the, the more aggressive ones, even though there's all these vermilion beeliners around, these big red snapper will come up and, and they'll feed up above them. But that's all this really is, and, and when you see that amount of bait, you know that there's going to be bigger fish with it, be it vermilion snapper or Spanish sardines, whatever it may be. The bait will bring in, in, in the bigger fish. And so my main techniques for targeting these uh, red snappers is, is I started to use a lot of hog balls. Basically, I would always try to fish light tackle first just to get bites going. And see what works. And for the red snapper, I I would use dead bait with a hog ball, while other people are using heavier. And I love a, a strip of bonita. So you can see, had a good day already. I caught that gag on a hog ball. Um, they were getting some of the red grouper fish in the bottom. And then I started to to show these guys, hey, you know, if you want to get some of these bigger red snapper, I love a little strip of bonita on it. So what I do, I feed out that line. You can see. If if I ever have a camera on my head and I'm fishing light tackle, I'm slowly just feeding the line out a little bit at a time. And one other thing I started to do, this is something I, I this was a demo line that I got that I, I fell in love with. And, and so now I've started to, to kind of sell it myself. It changes colors every 32 feet. It's got five different colors on it. So you know, say you're going down from green to yellow. Like, oh man, I'm getting hit in the yellow. So now you repeat that process over and over and you're in 170 feet of water, but the yellow line might be when your bait's in 140 feet of water because those fish are 30 feet off the bottom. You can repeat that. So I'm like, oh, I'm in yellow. All right, get hit. So with that Bonita, typically you're going to have, you know, another chance for it. So I stop it right away and I'm trying to get that, that fish to come back. And more often than not with Red Snapper, they're going to come back multiple times trying to get a bait if it's something that's going to stay on that hook. Um, a live bait or something mushy fall right off you're not going to get it so you can see he's on and on these light tackle i'm trying to tell him don't 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 tighten it too much but that fish takes him for a little bit of a ride it's so much fun if you're hooking them 50 feet off the bottom and they're just you know trying to go all the way back down on the light tackle that's the way to do it And so here I am, how I'm rigging it. That's just a, uh, I think a 1.25 ounce pink hog ball. A um, little bit of bonita. I like the scissors to be able to cut the strips and then cut your bait off. And just getting a little bit of a square, maybe in a 2 by 4 inch, 2 by 3 inch square or something like that as he's fighting that fish. And real easy to do. I'll check my leader every so often. I only use 30 or 40 pound. If you're hooking these fish up off the bottom enough, you don't need a very heavy leader. It's it's pretty easy to uh to get by with something lighter. The net is occupied. So you can see big red snapper coming up as I'm re-rigging. And it's something that 
the first couple times you do it, you get that you know that line just peeling out of your hand. Oh, it's 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 the greatest greatest feeling fishing when that line just starts peeling out and you're trying to flip that bale over. Be it because it's a red snapper, a mangrove snapper, yellowtail snapper, you know, I'll get gag groupers up off the bottom a little bit. It's a great way to fish, and so we're we're topping off the coolers um, with just a little bit about a little bit of everything. It's a summertime special, and now in the fall, what's even better is these fish are coming in shallower. So, a couple more big red snapper. And I'm only using a 6,000 Saragossa on a, a 15 to 40 rod, so it's nothing nothing real heavy. But good time. Big fish. If you're in 170 feet of water, your average red snapper, I mean, you can get days where you're averaging 15 to 20 pounds. It's, it's nothing nothing absurd. And that's in summertime. Fall time, those bigger fish are coming in shallower, so in 120 feet, you can get you know fish this size. It's, it's nothing, nothing too crazy to, to get bigger fish in shallower now. They move in in the fall, so that fall season is nice. And so this is my brother, Rob Fishes the World, on uh, Instagram. And I'm kind of explaining to him, this is literally his first drop this day. I'm like, these fish are going to come up off the bottom. He's got a you know brand new Florida Fishing Products reel that he was trying out on a uh, a nice new rod as well. That The rod was fairly light. I think it was a 15 to 30. And I'm like, these fish are going to hit. You're going to have a little bit of room to play with. And so it's going... He's got a good fight going on there. And so he's able to get that fish worked up. I'm like, yeah, you got a you got a good size one there. And this is this fish is probably about 18 pounds. You know, it's pretty nice. Uh so he gets that fish up. Nice fish. And then later on. So there's that one, the first one. So we got a nice pair there. And so later on, he ends up getting an even bigger one. This is the bigger one. And let me bring in his uh his Instagram video here. Like I said, Rob fishes the world if you want to follow him. He's got quite the social media following. So here's his post with that with that giant. <laughs> So that's a big fish. 170 feet of water on light tackle. It's a good time. And finally, this is another day where we are getting some of those bigger fish up in the column. This is a, a fall day. Um, for it was it was just after the fall season, and we're in 120 feet of water. We're actually trying to get mangoes, and so you can see these. A lot of these fish are mangoes. You get those, you know, little more solid shows um, over the hard bottom. These fish are coming up in the water column. So I'm using a baby hogwall, a little eight ounce one. And I'm dropping, dropping, and it only gets about 20 feet below the boat. And then next thing I know, it is screaming towards the bottom. I'm only got a a, a 4,000 reel here with 20 pound braid, and, and I think I had 20 pound leader, just as as light as I could go for mangoes. And this is in 120 feet. These bigger fish definitely move closer to shore as that sun gets lower um, throughout the year. And the uh, the bigger fish show up. So as you can see, I'm doing my my line, just you know, feeding it out, feeding it out, keeping a feel on it. So I know when that line starts peeling, I'm going to be ready to flip that bell real quick. As soon as it gets eaten. And so there, it started to peel a little bit. So now I'm on. I'm like, all right, I think I'm I'm letting that line get tight. Flip the bell, and I'm getting ready because I'm getting bite. Ooh. And there it is, screaming. Yeah. 
And luckily that fish had some some room to go down because I hooked it so high up in the water column. You don't have to catch in seven, eight pound mangoes. Uh, I could tell it wasn't that. Doesn't stop, doesn't stop. You know, now I know that that fish is getting lower. Um, with that multicolored line, you know where the bottom is. This isn't the multicolored line. This is before I started using it. But now you know, hey, purple's the bottom. If you're hooking a bigger grouper or a red snapper, you're like, all right, I've got this much room to play with. So I've been able to get a lot more fish up on light leader just by knowing where the bottom is. And so these big red snapper, when you get them turned after that first initial run, usually, usually you're in good shape. Fish wear you out. Big tackle, light tackle. Now keep in mind, we weren't fishing for him though, so we weren't real happy. <laughs> weren't real happy seeing a red snapper. Big freaking red snapper. Oh my god. So that's that's probably a 20 pounder in 120 feet of water. That was a couple years ago. I, I definitely see more of them like that now coming in shallow. Inhaled it. So having days like this, you know, everybody can do it. These fish probably average, you know, 12, 14 pounds. Um, get a little mixture in there in summertime. In the wintertime, you, you get a lot more gags when you're red snapper fishing if you're using bigger baits. Um, but you've always got a, you know, choice. Or you always got a chance to get bigger fish by using, you know, lighter tackle. So hopefully you uh, learned a few things. I would suggest uh, if, you, if this is something you're interested in, I, I have a package of, you know, the different size jigs I use when I'm red snapper fishing. Usually I'll, I'll start at about a half ounce and then I'll go up to about a 1.5 ounce. Right in that range seems to be the best, just depending on the depth and the current. Uh, I've used a half ounce out to, you know, 220 feet of water before when, when the conditions call for it and the fish are being a little more finicky. I'll use, you know, a half ounce, half ounce jig with a little piece of squid and I'll get big fish that way. It, it definitely works. So if you're interested, I'll put links to all that stuff. The line as well, the multicolor line. It, if you start using it and you get experience with it, it is a great tool for knowing where you're getting your bites and where the bottom is. And those are two very important factors when you're using light tackle uh, to know. Um, so yeah, if you like this, I'm going to, you know, try to keep putting out more videos, some of the content and, and go from there. Thanks.